everyone, it's Robin Riley for Dobello's Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial that I am titling The Window Card. This card was inspired by Debbie from Inkylicious Stamps. I saw this several months ago and I'm just finally getting around to sharing the way I did this with all of you. Before we get started though, let me invite you to join us in our Facebook groups. We have the Dobello's Design Lounge, and that's where we showcase all of our Lavinia products. We also have the Dobello's Design a la carte page, and that is where we showcase all of the other products that Patty currently has in her store. The other social media platforms that we are on are Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok, and you can find us there by simply searching the hashtag Del Bellows Designs. Okay, let's get started with the supplies. And bear with me here because this is um, this supply list is a little longer than what I'm used to presenting. So hang in there with me. All right, the papers that I'm using, I'm using a 300 GSM piece of white card that measures four and a quarter by five and three quarter inches. That will be placed top a piece of black card, which is approximately 65 pounds, and it measures four and a half inch by six inch. You will also need a piece of scrap, and I'm just using a piece of scrap of the same white card. It wouldn't have to be the same weight by any means. Uh, all that's gonna be used for is for the dreams sentiment. Okay, let's go over the inks that I'm using. Today I'm going to be using the Distress Ink in Black Soot. If you don't have the Distress Ink, you can naturally use the Distress Oxide. I didn't have it, so that's why I'm using this today. All stamps will be done in Versafine Claire Nocturne. For the sentiment, I will be using Versamark, which is a sticky ink, for those of you that are not aware. And on top of that sticky ink, I will be placing the Wow Metallic Gold Rich Super Fine Embossing Powder. I will add a little bit of brilliance to the card by using the Moonlight White. And to apply that, I'm just going to be using a makeup sponge. And I use very little of it. So this is something, if you didn't have it, you could actually skip this very easily. To, to apply the Distress Ink, I will be using a blending brush. For stamping, I will use my Misty Stamping Tool. And something else I want to share with you, when I do embossing, what I have just recently learned about is using parchment paper. And this is simply baking the stuff you bake with that you would line a cookie sheet with. I have found that if I use this along with the embossing powder, the powder doesn't stick to any other surfaces. It, it comes off of this surface rather easily. So I'm able to not only cover up the surface that I'm working on, but I'm able to get it back into the bottle much easier. The stamps that I am using today, all Lavinia stamps. This is Fernleaf, LAV124. And to be honest, any foliage stamp would work. I will be using... Oops, let me get Mooch out of here. He's stuck. I'll be using Mooch, the cat, LAV404. I will be using the top little mouse here from the three woodland mice. That's LAV402. And the sentiment, Never Let Go of Your Dreams, it's actually titled Never Let Go. That's LAV412. I'm only using the word dreams. And what is nice about this sentiment is each of the words are already separated now, one of the main supplies I will be using today will be the Lavinia, let me get this for you to see, the Lavinia masking sheets. These, these are really nice, large sheets, and they have a very low tack to them, and it, it's really easy to cut. I have yet to try die cutting or punching, but it, it seems to be rather easy to work with. Every sheet 
reminds it the, the top sheet. Let me go over that first. The top sheet here, as you can see, is white. When you peel this back, it is on top of a piece of acetate. I'm sure you can see the sign there, the shine there. When you peel this back, the top piece has the sticky to it, and it reminds me of Sweet Poppy Low Tack Tape. It is reusable. That's the other thing that is wonderful about this product. And you save the acetate sheet and you're able to place it back on rather easily. Okay, two stencils I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a one inch moon mask. And at the time that I made this particular card, I had used a, another brand's brick wall. But since then, Lavinia came out with the block print stencil. And I'm going to use that today because I think that resembles a nice brick wall. That should give some interest to the um, card itself. Okay, I think... Now, I forgot to tell you, the adhesive I used. Art Glitter Designers Dry Clear Adhesive. And that will be just to adhere everything. I will be using my spray bottle mainly just to clear my stamp, clean my stamps along with the uh, microfiber cloth that I use. And um, lastly, a piece of paper towel. And that is how I create the clouds in the background. The final supplies that I'll be using. You most definitely have to have a very fine line black marker. I like, to use the, I like to use the Prismacolor, and this is number 01. It's extremely fine-tipped, and I'll explain why you want to use a black ink marker in a moment. I'll be using the Uniball Signo white pen. That creates some highlights. I will be shading with the Stabilo black chalk pencil. And I am using a gold Sharpie, not sure if you noticed, but I edged the white card in gold to give the appearance of a gold layer behind the card. Okay, let's get started. Let me grab my card first. And I'm going to explain about that black pen and why it is important. Now, you'll see this kind of looks a tad bit tattered. This is my stencil that I created for the window. And what I did is I took a piece of lightweight card. You can see my middle line that I drew. And I created the window shape. Once I had this shape created, I placed it on a piece of the masking paper, which I measured to fit my card, and I traced my shape around, then using a craft knife, which you wouldn't have to use a craft knife, you could use a pair of scissors, you trim out the window. But you need to be careful doing that because you're, you want to use that window as a mask while we are working here. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to carefully peel this apart. Now this part takes a little bit of patience, I will say that. I had to try a few attempts before I felt somewhat comfortable using this. Don't worry if there's a little tear in the corner because remember, this is sticky back and it's going to adhere to the card. There's that acetate sheet that I will reuse again when I'm finished here. Okay, yes, it curls a little bit, but like I said, just be a little bit patient. I will line up the base with the base of my card And to try to do this as evenly as I can on my first attempt so that you don't have to watch me do it over and over. And that looks pretty close. Oh, a little off, wait, that'll drive me insane. 
So just be patient with yourself until you get this aligned the way you want, you'll be comfortable with it. And then I just slowly rub the area. Now I'm not too terribly concerned if it's a tad bit off center because I can always trim my card down in the end and, it, and it'll work out just fine. I want to make sure the edges of my window are down well. Okay. And those little tears that I got in the corner, again, this is probably the third or fourth time I've used this particular piece of masking paper. So it, it is going to eventually wear out. All right. Now, the importance of the black um, marker that I'm using. Any artist marker, like I said, will work. You want it to be black. You do not want to use a pencil. The reason being, if you would use a pencil and trace that window, you will never cover those pencil marks. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't matter what kind of ink you use. It won't happen. So that's why you have to use a black marker. You may still see a tad bit of this, but it's not going to stand out and have that shine that a pencil would have. Okay, what I'm going to do is simply trace around, and I'm going to trace very slowly. I'm going to trace the window shape. Don't worry if you bobble a little bit. Come on, not too many windows back uh, and brick walls are perfectly straight. So just do your best. Take your time and breathe. It's okay to pick up your pen, start again. And I have to spin my artwork. I, ha I That's just the only way I can do it so that I'm capable of seeing what I'm doing. All right, now that that's in place, you'll see when I remove it, you'll be able to see better where this window is going to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the cutout. And this is how you create your window ledge. You decide how deep you want your window ledge to appear. So start at that point Make sure you get this as straight as possible so that your window ledge looks legit. And then you just line up the edge with the utmost point of your window. And very carefully and slowly trace that mask. Go slow when you get to the point and stop. All right, I got a little dip there, but I'm not gonna to be too concerned about that. What I'm going to do is retrace this a little bit. This is real life, guys, this is what happens. But I'm pretty sure in the end, you're not going to notice that little bit because I'm gonna be stamping a mouse there It'll all work out. So don't panic if you do what I just did. Okay, let's look at this window a little bit. And we're gonna work from the inside of the window outwards. I think that's actually the easiest way so that you don't get frustrated. So let's first start with the moon. I'm going to place that one inch circle approximately where I want that moon to be. And I'm going to bring in my Distress ink, the black soot, using my blending brush. And I wanna knock off as much of this as I possibly can because I don't want this to be too dark. If you get some dark splotches, oh, don't worry about it. It's all gonna work out in the end. But try to start out with the lightest layer possible and just right on top of the masking tape don't worry if you hit the window ledge just go ahead and get at it 
I first want to just get my moon set, and I am doing just a super light coating around my moon. I have to switch hands. That's the only way I can do this properly. All right, there. That's enough of a moon. I don't want anything more prominent than that. And I just noticed I forgot to finish my window ledge. Sorry about that. Let me go back here, guys. All you're going to do here to finish that ledge, use that mask that you created. And from corner to corner, you're going to draw a straight line. Again, using that marker. Ah, oh, there, that looks better. Goodness gracious. Okay, now I'm going to go back in. I'm not getting any more ink. And I'm going to apply just another fine light layer of the black soot. I don't want to get too carried away in the night sky. Now I'm going to bring in my piece of paper towel and I'm actually going to tear on this side. I don't need that large of an area referring here. I just need a small area to create my clouds. I need to put my paper at an angle just because that's me. But how you do this is you just lay your paper towel in the area where you want your cloud to appear. Using a little ink, I just brush down, trying not to run into the window ledge or side. And if I do, I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm going to be able to cover it up. This is rather forgiving. Okay, I need a little more ink so we can see that cloud. All right, do you see there's a little bit of a cloud? All right, I'm going to continue doing the same. I'm gonna add a little more ink here to make it a little more prominent. Not worried if I get blotches because in the end, you'll be amazed at how it all gets covered up and you don't even really notice it. All right, small. Small brush strokes to create these lines of the cloud. I try to vary where I'm using the paper so that they don't look real uniform. Get another one in here. Okay. Let me add another one here. Just for interest. So easy way to create some clouds in the background. You can do a couple. You can even do one over the moon if you want. Something real light. A little bit of interest there, see? Okay, I'm going to just add some more gray on my, or black, I'm sorry, the black soot on this windowsill. Okay, see how that's created? Now, remove this carefully because we are going to try to save this piece and use it at another time which actually we're gonna reuse it here. I'm gonna just stick this to my mat since this is a non-stick surface and then it'll be ready for me when we move on. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna create the wall and I'm going to use, continue to use the black soot. This time I'm going to be a little heavy handed, heavy handed especially in the corners. I want my opposite corners to be really dark. And I'm not too concerned that I'm hitting the line of the window, that's fine. And I'm going to slowly build my color around my window. So I'm doing opposite corners. I want these two corners to be the darkest, and then I'm going to just kind of fade out into the brick wall with lighter shades of the black. All 
Okay, now I'm going to do a cheat. You don't need to sit here and watch me continue to blend over and over until I get happy with this. I've already gone ahead and done one. So you can see where we started. And here you can see actually a much better version. So let's continue on with this one so that you don't become too bored watching me blending colors. Okay, what I'm going to do though is I am going to add just a little more black in these corners. I want this to be darker. And as you can see, I, I'm guessing that's probably about my fifth layer of black, um, possibly even more. I kind of lost count, but that's how I do it to slowly build layers. And the slower you can build your layers, the better your results will be, without a doubt. Okay, let me just get that in there. All right, there we go. I'm gonna call that quits for right now. I think that's good enough. Okay, now the next step, what I'm going to do is I am going to bring back my mask that I created as it all curls up on me. Why not? It's so humid here. We've had such a spell of humidity here in western Pennsylvania. It's been crazy. I don't remember it ever being this bad this late into the summer, but anyway, enough. I'm going to reposition this back onto my card. My main concern is to get the right side lined up the best I can because I want to stamp the full foliage next. So I'm gonna, if I'm off just a tad bit on the left side, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stress over that. Like I said, my concern is right here on the right, and I'm going to get that as close as I can. If it's not perfect, no sweat. There's always a way to fix this. Okay, so that worked out actually rather well, a lot better than I expected. Okay, so let me bring in my Misty stamping tool. And I'm going to position this. I am not worried about that crease, so don't worry about it, guys. It's, it's all okay. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that fern leaf. And I just want to give the appearance of the fern, let me show you again, coming from the outside of the window. So let me place that about there. I think that's good. Get another magnet on there just for safety reasons. And I'm going to use the VersaFine Claire Nocturne. Catch the edge of this. Put my finger and everything right in that ink pad. Oh, what a day. Okay, here we go. Let's give this a little bit of foliage. I'm going to press extra firm near that edge. And even if that edge has a hairline that's not touching, I can draw that in with that pin, that, um, Artist marker. Uh, there's a brand. Pit pens are wonderful. The Prismacolor. Uh, I suggest you really get those. They're, they're great for filling in when you make mistakes or you need just to add a tad bit here and there. Okay, let's put a layer here. All right. All right, that one came out rather well. And then I'm going to add just a little bit down here in the corner. Even though the cat's going to be there, it will still show through. Let's see if I have enough ink. No. Nope. All right, let's get it on. A little, little more on that stamp and place it. Okay, I'm pleased with that. Let me get my cloth and clean off my stamp quickly. Get, in that, get into that habit of cleaning your stamps immediately. 
Now it doesn't matter if your stamps get stained, they still work well, but if you don't get in that habit, you end up making uh, sloppy messes here and there. Okay, now that I have that done, let me get rid of my stamping tool for a moment. And I'm going to remove this. I think I still have some stick left. And like I said, this must have been about the fifth time I've used that um, for practice purposes here. Okay, so for that little bit of an area here where you may, I hope you're able to see that it didn't touch the side of the window. This is when I'll bring in that artist pen and I will just simply make some connecting marks there with very tiny strokes. No one but me will know that I did that. No one's even going to notice it, I'll be honest with you. But that makes me feel better that I did that and now that now it's complete. Okay, now I would like to go ahead and I'm going to stamp the cat. We're gonna get Mooch here on the windowsill. Get my magnets in place. And I'm going to grab good old Mooch. Hang on, I'm coming, guys. Okay, so let me get Mooch on the windowsill where I would like him to be. All right, that looks pretty good to me. And again, I'm just going to be using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne. And I'm going to keep Mooch on the door of my Misty. I am not going to remove him. That way, if I need to use him again after I stencil, he'll be in a perfect placement. We'll talk about that when I get a when we get a little further into this card. Okay, let's see. All right, there's a little bit of a line of the windowsill that I can see there. And what I'm going to just do is I'm going to come in with that black marker again. And I'm just going to touch up along that line with this marker because there's just an ever so slightly, I'm not even sure that you could see it. There was a white line. I could see a little bit of a whiteness there. So I wanted to get rid of that. And I'm going to bring in my little mouse here, get him positioned. I want him to be peering out over the window also. And I probably don't need to leave him in place, but I think I will just to be safe, just in case I need to restamp him. That, that's the, the best part of a Misty. If you need a second stamping of a of an image, it's just the easiest way to get it. Okay, which I do. He didn't come out clear. My uh, ink pad must be getting a little drier than I thought. So let me just do a second stamp. All right, there he's good. Now, let's remove this completely. And what I'm going to do now is bring in that stencil. And remember, this is called the block print stencil. And I'm just gonna actually, I'm just gonna hold this with my hands. You could use uh, some tape if you wanted, but I, I feel confident that I can hold this rather still. And I am going to use the VersaFine Nocturne along with which I guess I didn't tell you, I'm gonna be using a stencil brush too. So I wanna hold this in place, get some of the Nocturne onto my stencil brush, and believe it or not, this black will appear over top of another black. This is such a rich color. And I don't need these to be like super dark I just want to give the appearance of the wall. We'll take a peek, and yes, we can see that there. Very lightly on this side, I'm going to add some bricks. Maybe a little bit more. Going to add some bricks here in this corner. 
I'm going to be careful not to go over Mooch's tail. That way I won't have to re-stamp him. But if I did go over Mooch's tail with this ink, and I don't like the looks of it, that's why I would re-stamp Mooch, and that's why I left him in my Misty. All right, very lightly I'm going to show the bricks there. And let me realign that. That slid just a bit. I might just very lightly add some here. Okay, there we go. I think that stencil looks pretty good for brick. Yep, I see a splodge there, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about that. Um, no brick walls are perfect by any means. They all have marks on them. Okay, let me clean off my work surface. And at this point, you know what? Let me get a little bit more water here just to be sure. Okay, and I do want to wipe off my hands a bit. All right, what I'm going to do now is start to build up some of the shading in the windowsill. And like I said, I'm going to use a charcoal pencil from Stabilo. And I'm going to start first on the edge and add just a thick line. thick line of the chalk. And then with my finger, I'm going to draw it inward. Same thing here in the corner. I want to get some darker areas. I'm going to drag that in. Remember, this is a pencil, so if you go outside, a outside of the line, you can very carefully use an eraser to pull some of that off. But I think we as crafters are all a little too hard on ourselves sometimes, and um, most people wouldn't notice what we notice as our mistakes. So as you can see, I'm starting to get a shadow effect. Now this is one of those times that you can work for a long, which I'll tell you what, on that original card, I, I worked a very long time to get that shading. So it's all up to you how much you want to work on the shading to get it to look more and more realistic. So ideally, you just continue to add these layers uh, with chalk pencils, I do like to go in different directions. Here you see I'm making horizontal lines, where initially I was doing vertical lines. Just a little trick I picked up along the way, uh, watching many other artists far greater than myself. Uh, that's how they get nice, smooth finishes. But there, you can see how that's starting to develop. So I would want to get some under mooch here. I don't want a whole lot because the moon is shining in here and it, I want to keep an area that is somewhat lighter. Now, if you really wanted to get carried away with the shading, you can go in and shade in some of the bricks, which that's how I'm going to get rid of this mess up here, shading over that brick. But you can see that just adds more dimension to your picture. It adds more dimension to your wall. So we could do this for a long time. Again, I just don't want to bore you watching me do that. But just showing you that you can add more dimension by adding some lines. And I, I would highly recommend that you get a set of chalk pencils. They're pretty amazing. Uh, I believe regular colored pencils would work. Um, you could give it a try. Um, I'm sure that's what I was using way before I got my chalk pencils. So you just learn how to uh, practice with your colored pencils and blending. There's so many videos online, you guys all know that, that you can find ways to teach yourself all kind of stuff. Okay, so you can see here how this is slowly being created. 
Again, I don't want to bore you with this. But, oh, goodness, I love shading. I, I could sit and do this for the longest time. You, you can't believe how many hours I've put in just shading one picture. But you can see it's really not that hard. You just slowly build each layer and add to it. That's, that's it. Now, let me show you how I did that gold edging around the paper. What I do is I save my scraps from my Lavinia products. I love these papers. I know you guys all recognize these sheets. So I use that when I'm creating a frame around a card. What I do is I take, I lay my card on one, sandwich it between a top piece, put this to the very edge. I leave myself, oh, 16th of an inch, maybe an 18th of an inch of the card actually sticking out. Using that gold Sharpie, I very slowly run it along the edge. A lot of pressure on my right hand holding the card down. Then I rotate my picture and I do the same exact thing over again. The minute you get too confident and you let the weight off of this right hand is the minute that marker is going to slip. And I think for those of you that have done this method of framing a card, it, I think it's happened to all of us. So take your time. That's the biggest tip I can give you for creating these types of frames and use pressure on the hand that holds your card in place. All right, one last side. Okay, see, I hope you can see that gold frame. It just gives it, a, I, I like doing that. I think it just gives it a nice faux layer. Now, rather quickly, let me bring in that scrap piece of paper. And I'm going to create, create my sentiment. I am going to use the ink that's left. Hopefully there's enough on here. I'm gonna ink up this scratch piece of paper. I am not concerned whatsoever about any of the blotching or unevenness that's going to be created here. All right, that's good. I'm going to bring in that stencil one more time. And again, I'm not going to re-ink. I think I have plenty so that I can see somewhat of a brick wall. Let's see how that came out. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and the stamping tool's coming back. And I didn't have to restamp Mooch, so I can remove him, get him and the mouse out of the way, putting this in the corner with one, one magnet should do it. Okay, let's hope that's lined up. And I'm going to use the Versamark ink Oh, I have to remember, you know what? I just re-inked that last night, and I bet you that is super moist. Let me do that again. Good thing I remembered, or I think I would have had a pretty big mess here. Okay, light tapping since I just re-inked this. Yeah, that worked. I would have had a real mess. Okay, let me bring in my parchment paper along with the fine gold. Now granted, you don't have to put a sentiment on yours. I just want you to see how I did this in case you're interested in doing that. Knock off the extra. And to be honest, I'm not too terribly concerned that some of the powder stuck to the other ink. I think it's going to give a nice little bit of shimmer. If you're not happy with that, what you can do is you can, let me grab a brush here in my stash, you can um, bring a brush in and you very carefully wipe off where you wouldn't want to see that shimmer. Like I said, I'm really okay with it, but I'll show you how, how you do that. I'm 
Okay, and I'm gonna give it another tap on the back. All right, that removed the majority of the gold that I don't want. And then I'm going to just funnel this back into my jar. And literally, I have very little mess if I use that type of paper. Don't have hardly anything on my surface. Okay, so if you decide to do a sentiment, you will need a heat tool. So let's get that started and I will melt the embossing powder. I like to start from the back, get my gun nice and warm, get some of the melting started. That way I don't lose a lot of the uh, powder. And then I flip to the front to finish it. Okay, that will do. Now I'm going to just be brave and use scissors to cut this out as straight as possible. I can actually use the bricks as a guide. Okay, that worked. There we go. And then I'm gonna bring those Lavinia pieces back in here that I used. Okay, and I'm going to add a little more gold around that piece so that it pops a bit. Even something this small, I do not trust myself to draw that line along the edge. Too many mishaps. Okay, one more to go. Now, if you wanted some dimension, you could use some pop dots and pop this word dreams off of your card, but I'm just gonna go flat with it. Let me move this out of the way. And my art get glitter glue is gonna be used just to adhere this to the corner. As you look at this, start to think of the other Lavinia stamps that you could set on the windowsill. I've done several of these cards and I've tried different animals. They work out great. Even some of the cardio animals look wonderful. Okay, as I'm looking at this, this will drive me crazy if I don't do it. I need to put a little grounding under the mouse. I don't want him to appear as if he's floating on that windowsill. And again, I'm just using this chalk pencil to do that. I'm gonna add a little more under Mooch. I don't know about you, but I don't know if my cards are ever completely finished. I can always look at them and find something that I wanna do a little bit better. Okay, close enough. And the last thing will be to adhere this to the black background and then adhere it to a card that will measure four and a half inches by six inches. So here's my original that I did many, many weeks ago. And here's the one today. Um, the only difference being here, you know what, I didn't add the white highlights, but I, I don't wanna make this drag on any longer for you guys. You, you can add the highlights if you would like, simply with the white Uniball pen. You come in and you just give some dots little lines on the mouse. You could do some on Mooch. Just get a little bit, let me get this running again. And then smear it, that's how I do my highlights. You do as much or as little as you want on your card. Let's give the mouse a little bit here, okay. And the same thing with the windowsill. If you wanted to lighten this up a tad bit, you could use this pen. You could also use a chalk pencil and drag in the opposite direction. Remember before I was going left to, I was going horizontal from the left side to the right side. Well, this time you would drag it from the right side to the left. And if you continued doing that with layer upon layer upon layer, you would start to get a better defined highlighted area. 
And the chalk pencil might be your best bet on that if you wanted to really make it highlighted. But overall, I don't think it's too bad the way I did it this time around. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you attempt to do a window card, please post it in our group and tag me so I can see what you did. Try the Lavinia masking sheets. I think you'll be pleased with those. Uh, it's a kind of a game changer for me. I'm, I'm not used to using stuff like this, but I think the more I practice with it, the more I'm going to like it. I think you will like it too. It, it's worth a try anyway. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching. Totally appreciate you taking the time to watch this long video. I hope you give it a try. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.